What is up, guys? Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. In this video, we are looking at quarterback Gardner Minshew for the Jacksonville Jaguars and discussing his uh, appeal in fantasy football, his fantasy outlook for 2020. Hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one, and let's get into it. So obviously last year, no one expecting Gardner Minshew to really do much of anything comes onto the scene, and it was really impressive. Uh, Nick Foles signed to a pretty big deal in the offseason of 2019, gets injured within the first couple quarters, and Gardner Minshew comes in and plays pretty respectful, respectably in uh, Nick Foles' absence. Nick Foles came back later in the season and really wasn't able to do much at all, so Gardner Minshew p takes the job back, and then the Jaguars ship off Nick Foles to Chicago, leaving Gardner Minshew as the unquestioned starter heading into 2020 now. No one was really expecting much from a sixth-round pick, and... I think there's definitely still debate as to whether or not the Jaguars actually see Gardner as a long-term option for the team, but this is going to be his year. There's not really any quarterback competition behind him whatsoever, and uh, from a fantasy perspective, he was actually pretty productive, uh, someone that definitely will be a streaming target and someone that will be rostered. Uh, for sure in super flex leagues so finishing last year uh, missing two games uh, both being benched during the time that Nick Foles was uh, healthy but uh, finishes the rest of the games that he played with 3200 passing yards 21 passing touchdowns only six interceptions and 344 rushing yards a lot of people would be wise to note that um, he was very productive on the ground he actually had more rushing yards than russell wilson did last year even though he played uh two fewer games so he finishes with 235.3 fantasy points which was 20th best at the position uh 16.8 fantasy points per game pretty average at 17th uh but again gave you some uh decent weeks here and there he had five total quarterback one weeks so someone that you can play matchups with or uh, pay attention for DFS uh, if you're streaming and redraft leagues uh, obviously that was the only time you were really considering using Gardner was when he was playing against a pretty rough defense uh, never really completely cratered outside of the game against New Orleans um, I guess the game against Houston would be considered a creator. Any, anything under 10 points is pretty abysmal from a quarterback. So uh, wasn't very consistent by any means. But when we actually look at some of the metrics uh, that he was able to put up last year, it, it shows some signs for potential improvement. Uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of get into our, our feel about the Jaguars as a whole here. So obviously only one game where he finishes a, a top three quarterback. So it doesn't give you tremendous upside, but still for a guy that you can basically get for absolutely free, uh, something just to note a name we want to stow away in our back pocket as the season goes on. Uh, so last year he actually had 51 deep ball attempts, which was not the highest, but 24th in the NFL, you know, pretty average, but his deep ball completion percentage was actually uh, pretty ridiculous at 45.1% that would put him at fifth best in, at the position. Uh, also had a really high pass uh, play action completion percentage at 71.6%. Those were his highest numbers. He was uh, pretty, pretty abysmal. Otherwise, pressure completion percentage was 27.1%. And it should be noted that the offensive line really hasn't improved at all came as one of the worst offensive lines last year and it doesn't really look to be much better as a whole heading into 2020. He also suffered from the third most drop passes uh, from his receivers and uh, Leonard Fournette. Um, <laughs> so 34, number three, the position, uh, number three uh, most drop passes for any quarterback. He also had a decent amount of interceptable passes uh, 20 in total, which is 14th most in the NFL. So only walking away with six interceptions was uh, not too shabby there, but definitely could see an increase in interceptions this year. And as we mentioned, 344 rushing yards is actually the fifth most uh, amongst quarterbacks, which uh, again, more than Russell Wilson in only playing 14 games is pretty, pretty good. Now, from a, a narrative perspective, something that we really try to avoid for the most part, but you, you kind of have to do it when you're considering a entire season and we're not just looking at week by week. Um, narrative is important in, in terms of trying to observe what we expect from a team. Now, the Jaguars obviously lose some key pieces on defense. 
They add LaVisca Chanel uh, on offense in the offseason, but don't go after a quarterback. Nick Foles is gone. Uh, They haven't really done much in the way of trying to fix their offensive line. It doesn't really appear that this is a team that's really making a push for anything this season and could very likely be not intentionally so, but uh, a team very likely in the running for uh, being the number one overall pick in 2021. They're actually in Vegas. They have the lowest win total, at least uh, they have for most of the offseason could change as we get closer to the season. But for right now, the Jaguars are projected to be the worst team in the NFL as far as Vegas is concerned. And I'm on board with that assessment. Defense is definitely taking a step back and Gokwe is still uh, in a contract dispute. So they've lost plenty of key pieces on their defense. They don't really have any uh, massive stars on either side of the ball anymore. Leonard Fournette contract issues are still uh, abounding. Obviously, they didn't pick up his uh, fifth-year deal, and they were trying to trade him during the draft. Couldn't seem to get any takers and uh, could be a potential uh, cut candidate. I doubt it. I doubt that they cut Leonard Fournette during the year, but they could potentially trade him to a a team that loses their star running back in the middle of the year and and needs another running back to to help him get over the the stretch of the season. So uh, doesn't really appear to be a team to be all that excited about from an NFL perspective, but from a fantasy perspective, that doesn't necessarily always turn out poorly for quarterbacks and wide receivers because garbage time is a thing and there will be plenty of garbage time in Jacksonville. So hopefully that creates a lower pressure environment for Gardner Minshew to not have to constantly be on guard about losing his job and just have the opportunity to go out there and at least try to stay competitive, even though the team around him probably isn't going to do him many favors. I don't know how that bodes well for him long term, but at least as far as this season is concerned, I would expect there to be quite a few games that he would be a decent streaming candidate, someone you can grab late in best ball drafts and feel pretty confident that he's going to at least get you five or six games where you're pretty happy that you had him on your bench. We have him projected going just under 4,000 passing yards with 3,988, 23 passing touchdowns, and obviously an uptick in interceptions based on our observation of more interceptable passes uh, by a good rate over the amount of uh, passes he actually had intercepted. Um, rushing yards, we still have him getting about 300, but obviously we saw last year that his uh, ceiling is a bit higher than that and finishing the year without any rushing touchdowns was a bit absurd we expect him at least get one or two this year Uh, so gives you plenty of uh, you know floor and again it's going to give you a few weeks where you're going to be able to stream them doesn't give you massive upside obviously playing for a team like the Jaguars you're really just relying on garbage time overall which Again, as we said, garbage time can add up to fantasy value, but not expecting there to be a massive upside for Gardner overall. So not someone I'm really going to be heavily targeting in redraft leagues, but in super flex and uh, best ball leagues, definitely a name you want to keep in mind. Uh, Should have a decent time at being able to put up some fantasy points for you. So, uh, and hoping for his success. Everyone seems to love this guy. I do too. Like, this has the personality that you want and hopefully that will actually uh, be able to translate into continued success on the field long enough that that as the Jaguars continue their rebuild hopefully can put a better team around him uh, we'll be able to see him uh, have some more success as we get uh, further into the future of his career but at least as far as 2020 is concerned probably not a massive fantasy target for me But anyway, let me know if you guys agree or disagree in the comment section below and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one. We'll see you guys in the next video.